ReZero is a shining diamond in a genre of grab-all. Now, ReZero is better known for its most over-sexualized character of all time. No, seriously, try finding someone that has been more over-sexualized than Rem from ReZero. Save me a slice! That's good. Okay, that's good. Yeah, that's... Alright, that's good. Okay, okay. Alright, okay, alright. Okay, that's good. That's good! It's... It's ENOUGH SLICES! Is This series, nonetheless, is an amazing series cursed to be a part of one of the most universally hated genres, Isekai. Now, that isn't entirely unfounded, nor is it undeserving. After all, this is the genre that has given more teenage boys fucked up perceptions of reality than anything Andrew Tate has done or said. We all know which one I'm talking about. <laughs> However, ReZero isn't like other girls. She puts her cap on backwards, she wears a messy bun, and she knows how to change her oil. What I'm trying to say is that this show is damn good and deserves a lot more credit. So indulge me and listen to me plead for a often overlooked series. Now, before we get into it, there are the big three. No, not those three. Big three reasons why I think that this isekai gets a pass, whereas most in this genre do not. These reasons consist of its main character and accountability, the plot and world building, and keeping us, the viewer, out of the loop. Now, there are light spoilers in this, but I promise if you haven't seen the series, it won't ruin it for you. But without further ado, let's get into it. The main character, Subaru, and accountability. Now, I may be a bit biased when I say this, but goddamn, Subaru is insufferable. Usually when I find a character miserable we'll deal with, as I'm sure for most people, it's often a death sentence for the inevitability of the series to be dropped. Whereas most fail, ReZero excels, however. This is a show with Subaru, who is so intentionally an ass that watching him die over and over again becomes easy. If you couldn't or don't know, the crux of this series is our main character can die and come back from death. Now obviously, as the series goes on, you begin to like Subaru a lot more, but that has nothing to do with who he is introduced to be, and everything to do with his growth throughout the series. Subaru starts off as a self-proclaimed hermit, who has no interest in qualities, like, whatsoever. So, as with most isekai, when he crosses over to a new world, he decides that he wants to be the main character of his story. Which, he really isn't. Off rip, Subaru is absolutely fucking useless. His magic is lackluster, he has no combat skills, and for the entire first half, or season, he is more of a hindrance to the rest of the cast than any sort of protagonist. Subaru, in fact, starts off in the reverse of most isekai characters. Rather than the humble, flawless, self-insert character the genre is littered with- DON'T FUCK WITH ME! I HAVE THE POWER OF GOD AND ANIME ON MY SIDE! Wait, you- ah! Subaru is narcissistic. He believes that he is the only character that matters, and just like the random children in Valorant, he refers to everybody as NPCs, and makes all of his decisions based off of his narrow-minded desires and beliefs. This isn't even making assumption. He outwardly states this multiple times throughout not only the first season, but many parts of the show. That he is not concerned with how everything else around him turns out as long as he achieves his goal. Now, a common thing that happens to narcissistic men is called ego death, which occurs in most men when they do shrooms. However, I suppose when you die over and over again, you watch your friends die over and over again by either getting eaten alive by rabbit dogs, uh, getting eaten alive by bunnies, a minor deity freezing you to death, being sliced to bits by a cult, someone taking over your body and killing you from the inside. Am I missing anything? 100% I am. There's too many ways in which this man not only does his ego die, but he dies straight up. However, after dying so much, Subaru has done something all the people I went to high school with have never done self-reflected, and through this self-reflection he realizes he's in fact not the main character of his life, and rather that he takes a sideline to many key players in this world, such as Amelia, or the other king candidates, and that he is in fact the bottom of the food chain. But even the bottom of the food chain has a place. Coming to such bleak realization, Subaru attempts to always come up with a method to create a perfect ending through his start over every time he dies. Over and over again, he will die just to obtain the ending that he wants, for it's all he really can do. This justifiably takes a toll on Subaru over time, but the viewer don't really get to see all that much of his toll until we meet the witches. Speaking of a witch, 
Who are these people that Subaru dies over and over for, and who are these witches pulling the strings behind the quartet? The plot and characters of ReZero is plentiful. And it feels like every time you watch it, there's a new piece connected or character connected to the overarching story. With the, omni with the omnipotence of Satella, the Witch of Envy, yet also her naivete, and the two unknown sins of melancholy and vanity, uh, to the never-dying Roswell, and to the witch cults that has so much interest in Subaru and gang. And none of this even mentions the ongoing competition for the crown, nor many of the other moving parts in the world of 3-0. See, that's one of the reasons why ReZero is so intriguing. Because although we follow and see the world through Subaru's eyes, the world does not care for Subaru. Like, at all. No matter how many endings he avoids, no matter how many friends he makes, enemies die, there is still an ever-working conspiracy that Subaru and gang are working towards discovering, while attempting to keep their head above the water amongst their many political rivals. With every new introduction to the cast, we begin to see more and more of how many moving parts are in this series. Now, although Attack on Titan truly does hold the crown for multi-level storytelling that focuses on leading powers and mistakes they have made, <coughs> ReZero manages to add some grounded and charming ideas in criticizing politics and the method in which power is distributed among people. We come, we come to find out there are many factors in the crowning competition, and although this aspect of the story it takes way more of a backseat narratively, it is essentially what defines the series as a whole. From the leaders refusing to help competition, even if there is countless innocent death, to conniving and manipulative behavior, to even masochistic fan service, all contenders of the crown are very tactical and motivated. On top of the crown's competition, we also have the cult of the Witch of Envy, or the Witch's Cult, who will stop at absolutely nothing to massacre our main cast. Now, although both of these factors end up taking up most of the foreground and background of the series, these plot points and moments of contention would be nothing and not nearly as intriguing without the troves of characters on all sides to compel us, the viewer, to conceive and wonder what is going on in this world. Now, one of the pieces of advice I would give you if you haven't seen the series yet and do plan on picking it up after this video is trust no one in this anime. Subaru learns us over time and time again after revealing the many many other characters' different ideals, goals, and more importantly, through the conflict in which people show their true colors. What I mean by this is, as I established, there are many moving parts within the story of ReZero, and many conflicts to be solved, none of which are easy. Hell, con the conflict of the first episode lasts two episodes fully, and that's without even meeting most of our cast. We only really meet our main two at the time. Now, that isn't to say the plot becomes convoluted or redundant. For the way in which the story is written, you could almost compare it to a mystery series. Whereas the show continues, we the viewer begin to piece together the grander puzzle of the story. However, these answers come at a cost that in the beginning, the viewer takes little to no toll. But since as I've said, we begin to actually like Subaru and see how he grows, it gets harder and harder to watch him struggle to get to the ending. And we are never part of a moment of peace. Even in Subaru's best efforts, we lose some integral characters, gain more and more powerful opponents, and worst of all, continue to have more and more questions than answers. Speaking of questions, keeping the viewer out of the loop. As I've learned in my writing class, you make a sandwich in your essays, or I guess in this case, videos. You start off with an intriguing topic to hook your reader. Our viewer in this case? Your weakest is in the middle, and your best work is at the end, and it leaves a lasting impression. I've mentioned it many times, but the only reason why ReZero is so good if we remove everything apart from this series that I've mentioned in this video. Thus far, nothing is as integral to the pressure used to create the diamond that is ReZero as the mystery we, the viewer, are blissfully unaware of. With every death, with every introduction of a new character, with every witch cultist, with every witch, and with even characters we have already been introduced to and think we have an understanding of, there becomes more and more questions. Some are little and simple and have no plot relevance. Well, that we know of. But some feel like earth-shattering revelations that we still have no idea to this day as to why, where, what, how, or when many of these aspects in the show are relevant. Maybe I'm delusional for this thought, but I truly do think that this is not the only cherry, but this is the cake itself of ReZero. As an avid fan of The Promised Neverland Season 1, I love 
when you start a series off and the plot with questions, but end with even more. By the end of the seasons that have currently aired, at the time in writing this, we are left with a bittersweet victory, gaining a powerful ally as well as a trove of information about the world and our characters, yet we are still lost. Simply because we have some answers does not mean we are satiated, nor does it mean that our main cast is safe. After all, this series, Crutch, is based on maliciously murdering the protagonist over and over again. Even the cute fucking anime cat is riddled with mystery. <laughs> that even I, with the use of Google and Wiki, I'm still lost on it. Not to mention this whole series. Although it has one of the major ball of yarns that is unraveling slowly, there are so many unimportant smaller balls of yarn that are slowly unraveling, it, which if nothing, aids in the interest of the world structure and the characters. Unlike most isekai, the series doesn't cater to the viewer or the protagonist. It does quite the opposite. Giving faith to the viewer can read through the context foes and come to their own conclusions on what is happening, with both limited or concrete information. If you couldn't tell, I'm the type that loves to be left to their own devices and conceptualize answers, but I also love to know the truth at the end of the day, even if I am wrong. And ReZero balances both of these feral desires of mine, allowing me to both speculate but also receive enough information to leave me satisfied by the end of the current season's run. Most isekai will make our protagonist overpowered and create a world with threats, but never do we fear, since we know the hero will always come out on top. Isekai at their core are designed to give the viewer the same feeling as playing a story driven game or an RPG, where we live through the overpowered protagonist that may be challenged but never threatened. ReZero not only changes that narrative, but flips it on its head, where we expect Subaru to lose something every victory, a massive cost for the life he is trying to live. And that's what makes ReZero a diamond in a pile of shit genre. ReZero doesn't have a Mary Sue. It has Subaru. He doesn't have universe-ending powers. He doesn't solely or fave. He couldn't beat Goku. He doesn't have a harem. Well, maybe I'm wrong in that. He is selfish. He's conceited. And he is particularly useless to everyone around him. Which is why his success is so much more fulfilling, and why his victories, although usually surrounded with some sort of loss, feels so much more earned. Rizzo isn't the first to be subversive in its genre in anime. Series such as Madoka Magica, Agame, Akame Ga Kill, Hunter x Hunter, Attack on Titan, and many more series have all done it, but ReZero manages to achieve all of this while being shoehorned into one of the most stigmatized genre in anime, which is already pretty stigmatized as a part of anime. And I wouldn't blame you for not having given it a chance just based on the genre alone. However, if that was your reason for not watching ReZero, the stigma surrounding its genre, I would ask you to try it. And take a chance. Just as I took a chance on some weird looking magical girl anime, or a Naruto lookalike. Both times I was blown out of the water. And just as I was for the last chance I gave Isekai ReZero. Thank you for watching. I've been Enigma Bazaar.